Exactly 25 minutes to the top of the hour. You're still on Good Morning Kenya. We now just want to quickly get the accounts of Kenyans living in the U.S. to just understand what basically this day means to them and perhaps to just brush you off on what exactly you're talking about. It is Thanksgiving Day. This is a day normally marked on the last Thursday of the month of November, both in the United States of America as well as Canada. But why exactly is this day just commemorated annually and why is it important? We link up with Kenya. Kelin Nakitare from California. Kelin, good morning. Hello, good morning. Kelin, if you can get me, good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? All right, so it is Thanksgiving, basically. We have just talked about this particular day here in Kenya in our studios. And basically, we just want to get your account. This day marked on the 24th of, uh, or basically on the last Thursday of the month of November. What does this day mean to you, Kayleen? Um, personally, for me, it is, it is just a day to reflect on... Uh, on the past events of the year and just what you're grateful for and the different opportunities and the people that have been that like, contributed to your life and your growth and uh, um and i believe that's kind of what it's it marks for almost all the americans where it's just a time that everyone comes together even for families that live in different states they all come together during this period share their meals and just um talk about their experiences and what they're really grateful for and show appreciation for each other and being in each other's lives. So it's celebrated with a lot of feasting and I know like, okay, so on our end right now, it is still Wednesday night. So it is still the 23rd, which is called Drinksgiving. Um, and Thanksgiving kind of just spills over to like several different um, things just because it's the biggest holiday in the U.S. So it starts with Thanksgiving on the 23rd and then it's Thanksgiving on a Thursday and on Friday is Black Friday and then we have Cyber Monday on Monday. So it is literally people get like a whole week off just to celebrate this day because it's really important to give thanks after for um, all the good things that have happened throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Well, you've mentioned, uh, you know, family, friends, relatives. Of course, this is why this day is marked anyway at the end of the day. You're a Kenyan based um, there in California in the U.S. So then uh, is your family going to be coming down there or how is it going to be looking like for you? Well, um, in my case, I have Friendsgiving because a lot of my family is still in Kenya. So I just have my immediate my immediate family with me here that and we will have celebrate with some friends uh usually if there's a lot of friends involved they just kind of call it friendsgiving as well mm -hmm. and we just share a meal and celebrate because it's not always convenient to for the travel it is and of course also growing up in kenya the most important holiday felt more like christmas so it's yeah, it is. A, hopefully, uh, maybe next year we can make it happen, or <laughs> years to come. But this year, I will just celebrate with my immediate family. Mm -hmm. And besides, I mean, friends mm -hmm. are also family in another light, the way you want to look That's at true. it as well. <laughs> All right. Maybe that is very true. I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. So maybe you can just tell us, at least also to just, um, uh, you know, brush our memory or basically brush our you know, brains on this one. You know, we know mm -hmm. there's different kind of foodstuffs there. We have heard of cranberries, yes. um, potatoes, stuffed <laughs> bread. But what is just so peculiar about the turkey and it being the main meal on this particular day, Kayleen? Actually, I will give you a fun fact first. Um, I have two fun facts that I just learned today, that each year 46 million turkeys are cooked in the U.S. Um, but a uh, majority of Americans actually dislike Thanksgiving dinners and the turkeys, and they just do it more as a tradition. That research that was done shows that 68% of Americans dislike the turkey um, and the different foods that are made for Thanksgiving. But just because it was started as a tradition where it was during the harvest, giving thanks for the good harvest. And um, so it is just, it's just marked, uh, you just, it's just more of, like, that's just the appreciation of the company, not necessarily the food. So the turkey, and another fun fact is actually the turkey was not initially the Thanksgiving food. Like when, when uh, Thanksgiving was started in 16, uh, I believe it was 1621 mm -hmm. that first Thanksgiving feast did not include turkey. So somewhere, some, somewhere in between uh, the 
slid it in and it just became like a tradition. And just that that's the same way, like there's the different string beans or green beans casserole and the cranberry sauce and mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese have just become like a norm for traditional Thanksgiving meals. But and people are slowly trying to break away from the norm, although the turkey will still just always be on the table. Yeah. As much as it's not particularly, it is, it is not as flavorful as other other meals. I, oh, I that, presume that's I, I share that opinion with a lot of people. Yes, <laughs> that's quite interesting. I mean, you've just said sixty eight percent of Americans dislike yes. the turkey, but just because it's tradition, then it mm -hmm. really is at the center of the meals. Well, well, yes, I mean, what is. does it say about culture, tradition, regardless of the evolving kind of world that we are living in? Oh, yeah. I, I think it's like the saying that goes in Kenya, Wacha Milanim Tumwa. I think it's just more <laughs> of what it stands for rather than exactly like people do not nitpick on like the particulars of the turkey and the flavors, or it's just more about what it stands for mm -hmm. and what it represents to the people and how much culture is important and what, mm -hmm. what people would take just to make sure that they preserve that family unit and that culture. Mm -hmm. And I like how you brought yes. that, you know, that, that, that uh, Swahili, methali, you know, as you say, <laughs> Mwachamila ni mtuma. I mean, it just shows you regardless of what happens in this life in terms of evolution, culture and tradition right. is culture at mm -hmm. the end of the day. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Okay, well said. And also, you know, I just came across um, a statement that said that this day is just, if not more important than Christmas. Is that really true? And if so, Why? It actually is. Um, now that you said that again, I'm sorry, I have a lot of fan facts to you today. <laughs> um, this song, Jingle Bells, was originally a Thanksgiving song. It actually was just called One Month's Open Sleigh, and um, it was traditionally made for Thanksgiving period. Um, because Thanksgiving has always been the most important period. Like people will travel across the world, just uh, across the different states to just be there and celebrate with their families, their extended family for, for Thanksgiving versus Christmas where it's just, it's usually just the nuclear family, yeah. right? And then just because, especially in the westernized culture, um, Christmas is not necessarily what it is, um, especially like in the Kenyan culture where it's more about Santa and, um, and gifts and just giving versus about like celebrating the birth of Jesus versus Thanksgiving has no religious boundaries because the U.S. is very diverse where people are trying to respect everyone's different beliefs and cultures. So Thanksgiving has no direct religion linked to it or direct beliefs linked to it. So it makes it easy for everyone to kind of just celebrate together without trying to be sensitive of what different people believe. Okay, um, well said, I hear you. And so then one would wonder, I mean, we're talking about a lot of eating, congregating as um, friends, family, relatives. You've talked about the potatoes there, the stuffed bread, the turkey, and you've given us why the turkey at the end of the day. But then aside from eating, Kelly, what else, what kind of activities come with this uh, Thanksgiving day? Well, one major thing I know is usually there's always a football game. Uh, Football is kind of like rugby in Kenya. Um, there's always a football game. So usually during Thanksgiving, people enjoy a football game together. Um, another thing is they also have a parade. Usually it's in New York, the Macy's Parade, and they will just have different bands and performers just matching and just commemorating this day. Mm -hmm. um, Besides that, I think mainly when you say Thanksgiving, mainly those are the two things that would come up because Thanksgiving is mainly associated with food, um, the Thanksgiving parade, and then the, um, yeah, of course, family and fellowship and um, football. Mm -hmm. yeah, football you is a big, I think it's the most common sport in the U.S. guy. I hear you. Football is the most common sport and of course one of those activities expected <laughs> to be taking center stage there. But for you, what right. will you be doing besides mm -hmm. eating? With friends oh and family. Oh my goodness! Um, coincidentally, I my birthday always falls around Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. so for we kind of just try to merge everything together <laughs> and uh, just make it like a more enjoyable experience. Where so for this year, I am I'm honestly probably just going to try and. Just, 
uh, enjoy the company of my friends and an immediate family. We have nothing big planned out for this year. Maybe we'll plan better next year. <laughs> but this year, we, we, were, <laughs> we were caught a bit off guard. It's, we're still recovering from COVID. I'll use that as my excuse. I mean, you'll plan better next year, so then you could have taken watch, perhaps you did last year, to do this year in terms of activities, just do something different? Um, well, of course, barbecuing is a must. We have to, we definitely have to barbecue and, uh, and cooking, and we already have prepared some dishes, but we kind of just do it Kenyan style. Just, we can't, as much as it's culture and... Fortunately, sometimes we don't fully appreciate the culture. We've not grown up in it. So mm -hmm. we made Kenyan foods instead. So we have samosas and biryani. And we have, uh, we're making viazi karai tomorrow. And we'll just choma nyama and just enjoy the foods that, that we grew up with. The foods that we don't get to enjoy every day because we don't have enough time. It's such a working culture where you don't have enough time to actually just look back and enjoy where you came from mm -hmm. and what was what is appreciated at home yeah yeah and you know i can tell you for sure i love that even the fact that you were there there's some cultures <laughs> from a kenya that you know you can just do away with and you really quite uphold them regardless of the place that you're <laughs> right <in. laughs> that you're in at Absolutely. the end of the day it's a good thing mm -hmm. kaylin it's really a good thing yes. all right also Thank um you. from history we learned that this is one of um those days that is really quite important, you know, for United States of America as well as Canada, as you mentioned, dating back from 1621. Perhaps might you be in a position to tell us, you know, maybe how different it is between Canada and US in respect to marking Thanksgiving? Well, the major difference that I know is that Thanksgiving is actually on, in October in Canada. In the US, it is in November, but I just, I actually, I thought, I thought the same. I actually thought that it was on the same day, but I found out that in, in Canada, they celebrate Thanksgiving in October. Mm -hmm. So that's a major difference. So it is still with the same purpose because it all happened around the same period. And it's just more, cause it's just, it was a native American holiday. I know, um, for sure at first I saw that it was more of during the colonial period when there was um, it was more about giving thanks for the territories that have been conquered, but then it more changed. It evolved more into more uh, a more positive um, holiday, a more positive festival. It was now giving thanks for the for the harvest and for the different accomplishments. I also know that for a fact, initially there was a period of time where President Roosevelt moved Thanksgiving to be the third the third. Thursday of the month of November. And then because of how it affected everything, especially and football teams complained about it as well. So they moved it back to the third, at uh, the fourth Thursday of the, of November. So that's the major, that's the, probably the only major difference I have seen the dates and, um, yeah, the dates and the different, the jumping back and forth with, a uh, um, the inconsistency in terms of like what day it falls on. Mm -hmm. So ideally it just looks like the dates could be the major significance difference, but at the end of the day, you know, the whole idea is the same, a time to just give thanks and be there together with friends, family as well as relatives. So also as you wind down, Kelin, I mean, you're from Kenya, <laughs> living there, but what would be your message even to just Kenyans who are equally marking um, this day together with you? Um, is my message to the Kenyans in the diaspora or mm -hmm. the Kenyans celebrating with me in Kenya? Yeah, just Kenyans, whether in the diaspora, those here celebrating with you, okay. or celebrating together, you know, mm -hmm. with Americans as well as Canadians in this particular important day. Because also at the end of the day, Thanksgiving, regardless of the history, it is a time to mm -hmm. give thanks at the end of the day. So what would be your message, Kelly? I think my message would be it is important to actually set aside a day to just be grateful mm -hmm. because sometimes we take for granted a lot of the things that happen and we think that life just has to just keep going as much as we're in a fast-paced world and we make time to you know to celebrate different things I think they should actually just be a day where people can just come together and just show their appreciation for the different things because sometimes we don't have enough time we don't get enough time we don't have enough time to reflect and realize the different roles people have played in our lives and we know that we're not islands mm -hmm. and we kind of we're all interconnected beings so we all kind of work together to grow each other in some way so they should just be 
a way that even if there is no holiday specifically designated for this in Kenya, I just hope that at least people can reach out on this day and just show the people in their circle how grateful they are mm-hmm. for their existence and yeah, the difference they've made mm-hmm. in their lives. Well said, well said, and thank you so much, you know, just for your time and giving us your account, at least also making us know um, why this day is important and why it's always celebrated um, every other last Thursday of the month of November. Moreover, it's your birthday tomorrow, so it's also a good place for me to wish you and sing you a happy birthday. We wish you all the best, more life. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday to you. Have a blessed day tomorrow and to more life. Thank you. You too. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <Good> day, <everyone. laughs> All right. So that that has been um, Kayleen Nakitare, of course, from California. They're just giving us um, her account and basically why this day is very important, why Thanksgiving Day is an important day for Canadians, for those in the United States of America, why it's marked on the last Thursday of the month of November. And also, again, this is a good place for me to just let you in on some of these projects that perhaps um, we are seeing that is being done by the U.S. Embassy. For instance, we have a clear eight minutes um, a clip on this one and just again before we get uh, to that particular clip perhaps I can just inform you on some of these uh, projects as well as programs that um they have also tried to ensure um, they, they, you know, they bring to the country, key among them being matters of health, um, security, trade, investment, education, and particularly when it comes to education, this is in line with the mentoring of a female journalist. In fact, um, the latest um, program on this particular mentorship was launched on the 21st of October. This was in Maseno University in Kisumu as well as Kibabi University in Bungoma. And the whole idea is just to look at some of these challenges that female journalists face in their line of work and also on this account that good number of them uh, would be joining school but towards the tail end and even towards their graduation, that number does not match the number that joins. Join. So what normally happens in between this are some of those issues um, that this particular embassy is just trying to look into, of course, partnering um, uh, with the very well-known um, Kenyan journalists in terms of this uh, mentorship program. And again, it's very important for me to also mention um, the $230 million support that was recently announced is in respect to food security. Of course, you know, as a country, this is one of our biggest problems. Currently, we are reeling with the issues of food security as a country, and this is one of those things that the, that the U.S. Um, embassy, together with the Kenya Corporation, or Kenya, Kenya Corporation, just trying to do to see how best they can alleviate the burden of Kenyans in respect to this. But also, let's quickly look at that particular um, clip in respect to what they are doing when it comes to mentorship of uh, female journalists in the country. Watch. For the mentees, you are welcome for this cohort. And uh, all I can ask you is allow to be led, allow to be mentored for one year. It's a commitment get the best out of the best. The program, as I was listening to, this is the first time I'm interacting with the program, but as I listen through, it's a great thing for the female mentees. It's very flexible, very interactive, and I like the element that it goes for a whole year. The fact that we've mentored 114 students and they've been successful in completing that mentorship program is a great thing. And we hope, as my colleague said, that let's continue uh, supporting more and more and more and more so that within the next 10 years, we'll have, we will have built, we could have built a critical mass of female mentees who can now themselves be mentors of other people without necessarily us going back and asking Andrew to give us support. This project, I want to be very, very uh, categorical in appreciating the facilitators uh, and uh, led by the embassy and uh, the stewardship of Andrew. That is a very good thing uh, that is going to go a long way in helping our young female journalists to get exposed. This provides an opportunity for our young girls, our young ladies uh, for that matter, to get connections, uh, 
beyond their universities. Because many times they sit in lecture halls and they fail to understand that we have opportunities out there. Not because Madam Caroline or Madam uh, Florence is your mentor, you must be able to talk to the rest. They are all welcoming, they are all your mothers, they are in different uh, uh, sections of the media industry. What stops you from knowing what uh, an editor does? What stops you from knowing what a news anchor does? You have them all at your beck and call. And uh, not only me, we have uh, different mentors and mentees who are doing good. If you know her backside, she's a reporter at KBC. If you know Sheila Nitich, she was a reporter at Switch TV and now she's in Citizen. We have Vivian Oresha, she has her own YouTube channel. We're doing great out here. You can do great. No one should tell you you're too young to move. You're not too young. I'm yet to graduate, but I'm already in the industry. What about you? Like in general, we say when a good, when something, when something, a story is good, it can never die. So the mentorship thing is good. That's why media council, I watch journals for human rights. Everybody's doing something around mentorship. It seems to be a working thing, and it's not replacing training colleges. It's just a recognition that sometimes because of numbers, because of resources, students sometimes do not get the best from the training colleges. So that then the mentorship can supplement what they might have missed during their regular academic course. So it's not uh, replacing academic teaching, it's purely supplementing what uh, the academy is doing. And again, also aware that this is where journalism is going. Like I mentioned, journalism is not going to be in newsroom. Journalism is going to be in your hands, in your room, doing your content. So if you are mentored and helped to pick up, then it will help. The, the, the courses we are doing are more than just journalism. We are now doing life-saving skills, mental health, uh, financial literacy, brand, personal branding, so that you can survive business, developing business plans, strategic plans. So the mentorship is not just about journalism alone. It's a big thing that wants to help you in a 360 manner. So we welcome you and thank the embassy for supporting IWAT and, and, and also commit again once more that the council will continuously work uh, with you, the embassy and uh, IWAT and other players and uh, obviously universities and training colleges in whichever way we can support so that then we, we, we make sure that journalism has a future uh, and journalism has a bright future and not what people are talking about. If there's anything I've learned in the five years that I've been a mentor of this uh, program is uh, the speaking out. When we were speaking about um, women suffering in the media, reporting on politics, Caroline Wafula, we had gone to Hilda and we were there like crying, not knowing what to do. We were being sexually harassed by members of parliament. And Hilda encouraged us to talk about it. And when we spoke about it, we didn't know what to do. Two years later, we get a phone call, I think from Rachel, Josephine and Hilda. And they say, now you know what, we found something that you can do. It's happened to you, but you can help others not go through what you went through. And because of that, you can see what has come out, out of it. So one of the things that I've learned is the spirit of learning to speak out. If we don't speak out, then we are not able to find the solutions for you. And that's why we've been encouraging the mentees every time to raise their hands and speak out. Without speaking out, you'll never be able to find uh, the solutions. We want to thank the U.S. Embassy specifically for being very passionate and deliberate about ensuring that women in the media stay there and not just as ordinary journalists, but actually journalists who rise to excellence. I am a product of uh, the U.S. Embassy uh, mentorship projects and also programs at our Muro program. And you learn a lot out of that exposure. You meet other women who have made it. And because of that spirit, you are able to do it. And because you are empowered, I believe without that kind of exposure, I'll not be having so much to share. And I know so many of the mentees here, or mentors, are also products of that uh, US, um, um, the, the US uh, programs. This program has not just been for the mentees alone. We've also been mentored, and we've mentored each other. And it's been a spirit of sisterhood and brotherhood. All of us here have had our own struggles because you can see most of us are in leadership. We've gone through difficult times, but we're able to talk to each other, call each other and say, this is happening to me, what should I do? Um, at AMWIC, it was about uh, winning elections. It's about um, uh, pushing for agenda. And this is the pillar that I've been relying on when I worked at AMWIC. I would tell them I need this support, I need this and that, they will be there. So it goes beyond just mentoring the mentees but also mentoring each other, being there for one another, walking the journey with ideas, and together we've achieved a lot. 
So this profession is noble, and it's one that you have selected probably because it has a societal value. It's a way for you to serve your community, your county, your country. That is not to say that it is not without challenges. And unfortunately, journalism worldwide is a dangerous profession. That we have to keep in mind as we develop programs like this, which hopefully provide some tools to not only deal with the danger, but to deal with the everyday aspects that also aren't so nice. 